so let's start modeling our first shape. One thing I could do to make things a little bit easier, I'm going to go to this image plane, hit control A, and you can see they got this alpha gain on here for this, so you can kind of make it uh, semi-transparent if you wanted. And one thing you could do with the time slider, you could uh, just right click over this and say set key, and maybe take it out about, uh, I'll just take it to the end, 120 frames like that, and then take the uh, alpha gain, I'll just put it to zero, and then right click on there and say set key. Now, without even having this thing open, I could go ahead and use the time slider, and I could get a little bit of transparency within uh, that image plane if I wanted. So that might help a little bit later on down the road. I'm going to go to the side view, so I'm going to tap the space bar, tap the space bar again, go to the side view. And the first thing I think I'm going to work on is uh, this shape within side of here. So uh, you should probably have your all your reference loaded on a secondary monitor or something like that or have it printed out. So you're able to see the shape and you're able to see what this thing is in uh, 3D, but we can see this is um, kind of a flat shape all the way in through here. We've got some interesting kind of things that we're going to have to do with this part right here. But what we can do is start using the uh, Create Polygon tool. So we're going to go up to Mesh Tools right up here and then use the Create Polygon tool. And this will let us just go ahead and click Point. So we can say Point. If I hold down uh, Shift, I should be able to get a straight line through here. Hold down Shift, click right there like that. And um, I'm just taking a look at here on this thing. There is a nice little kind of bevel like this, and it comes in through here. Um, I'm going to do this angle that we see in through here. Hold down shift and just go uh, straight across here. Um, I'm going to use some other tools a little bit later after we make this easy kind of shape and uh, do anything that's like perfect circles, things like that. You're going to want to use some other geometry types and I'll show you what uh, what I mean by that. So I'm going to go ahead and click to here. I'll click here and I'm going to have this kind of imaginary line that's coming down and through here somewhere like that and then I'll just click over here and hit uh, enter for that and so that makes a uh, polygon shape for us like this right and we can take that and we can extrude it um, before we do that like I was saying about the circular parts what I would like to uh, to get for that is um, some tools like instead of using a cube we can go to create and do polygon primitives and we can do a cylinder at that point um, you can do the option box for this and open this up and you can get a different radius and all these different things um, so maybe I'm just gonna try a radius I'll try two and height that's gonna get the height of the this thing here I'll just put this at two uh, divisions um, we're gonna use numbers like 8 and 16 so if you want a lot of roundness you're gonna use more something more like uh, 16 um, let's try that let's try 16 and height division we'll just make that one cap zero like that hit apply and you can see what those settings what it gave us is this cylinder that we've got here like this and you can always go after you just make it you can go to the inputs over here in the channel box select it and if you want to change any of those values you can you can change any of them like I can middle mouse drag that and change the, uh, the subdivision axis like I said I'm going to use a number like 16 and um, I'll show you if I did something like 4 maybe this makes a little more sense because we want to work in quads so if we got something like four if we go the next one up and we do eight and if I rotate this thing I'll tap E hold down J to snap rotation like this you can see on this kind of pattern I'll turn wireframe on shaded like this I could easily do the um, the multi cut tool and I'll shift right click in there I'll just show you this real quick I could slice across here tap Y from the last tool and then go across here and you can see that it's going to turn that into uh, quads for us right there's one two three four and that works all the way around for that I'll hit undo real quick and you can see if we go to the next level up we got a double on that and so if we go to 16 we've got something like that right so again this could be if you took the multi cut tool and you sliced across uh, these things like this and then you gotta do additional cuts where you go straight across like this into this 
you can see we've turned that into quads again. So that's why you kind of want to work with um, geometry kind of like this and work with these type of patterns. Um, looking at this and looking how low res it is, let's go ahead and I, I was saying 16, but I think we could probably get away with something that's a little bit lower, like the 8 right there. So if we take this and we move it into place, I can actually snap this uh, right down to this vert here. I could, with the move tool, if I hold down V, I should be able to snap and just move in that axis here like this, or I can move the center thing and snap that way. Now if it's not snapping for you, let's take a look at this. Let's double click on the move uh, options. You need to be in world uh, movement mode for this snapping to work, to work for snapping to grid. If you snap to vert like what I was doing, you'll be okay. But if you want to snap to the grid, you need to be on world. And you might want to check out this move snap settings and make sure retain component spacing isn't turned on. If we are moving verts and things like that, it might make a little more sense why you would uh, want to turn that off. But uh, we'll probably look into that a little bit later. So we've got this. We can go to the side view. Let's try to just scale this thing to be about the right size. It's not going to be, you know, absolutely rock perfect because I don't have schematics. I just took photographs of this thing. So I think that's going to be pretty good for that. Now, it does feel like that circle is a little bit bigger than this one back here. I can duplicate that piece um, through here. Um, I also want to snap it back into here, right? So it'd be nice if everything sat right on top of each other like that. So we can move the pivot point. The pivot point is in the center of the object right now. If you tap D, you can move the pivot point. And if you hold down V, you're temporarily turning on vert snap. And we can hold down V, click and drag that axis until we hit one of these verts. And you can see now the pivot points right along here. Tap D again, goes out of that mode of uh, doing the pivot point. You can also hit um, insert. That does the same thing as D. They recently added that not too long ago. Um, so now I can just move my object, hold down V, and then it'll snap right to that point there, like what we've got. Now I don't need all the rest of this um, cylinder anymore. I'm going to hit F11 or right click on here and say face mode. And I can just drag a marquee along all these faces. I don't need them anymore. And I'll just hit delete. And then now we've got this part here. And then what I'm going to do is duplicate this thing. I'm going to hit Control D, and then I'll make a duplicate of it. And so that's under Edit and Duplicate right there, like that. And now I got two copies. You see that? And I can just take this and push it back and through here. Now I'm going to go back to the side view, check the reference, and then move this over. Uh, and sometimes it's temporarily turned on uh, curve snap, so I'm not sure why. But I'll just push this back here and. You know, um, I mean, this should be the center of this this kind of uh, circle shape here. So I can scale this. I can hit R and scale that down. And I'll scale it down to about there. I think that'll be pretty good. Um, and on this one, see if I... If, this really should be right in the center there, but I'm, I'm going to fudge that one a little bit. I'll leave this one where it's at. Um, because this one falls directly in the center of this one, I can go right here, and we're going to use the multi-cut tool, and we're going to split across this thing. So while you're in object mode, you can right-click and say object mode. Or if you're in component mode like this and you hit F8, you can cycle back between component and object. And while you're in object, object is green shift right click and you can say multi-cut tool so we'll use the multi-cut tool and normally with this tool i like to take an edge and click and drag along there and then slide up to another vert but sometimes it's a little finicky but you can go right from a vert from here click here and then go to the next vert over and hit enter and that's going to slice that right in half like that now we can hit q to go out of that tool go to this picker here we can go right click on here and say face select this face up here and get rid of that part and um, that will give us this thing here. Um, now I got a piece of geometry here where I can take this vert and just take it and move it and then just snap it to this vert right here. Um, now if I was going to combine these together, I've got a vert that matches here, but there's a vertex on this bottom piece here, and I don't have that for this one. 
So I'm going to start off from this point right here, just click here, and then I can drag along on the edge somewhere right around there. I'll just do it right here and hit enter, and then uh, right click and say uh, vert, and we're going to select this, and I can hold down uh, W and then V. W is the move tool, V is going to snap right here. So now i got a vert there. I don't need this edge anymore. I can select it and hit, get rid of it just like that. And so then now i got a piece of geometry that matches up and through here. Um, I'm going to do the same kind of thing in through here, but I'm going to start on here like this. I'd like to drag from an edge, but it feels like when I just have this this uh, face all by itself, it doesn't like me to drag through there quite like what I'm used to. So I'm just going to start on the vert and then drag out in through here. Okay, a little note about this tool. Um, so I went to the modeling toolkit and you can get to the, some of the options for this, but basically you can turn on and off symmetry by holding down uh, control and shift and right click. And you can see symmetry. The symmetry is on. I was having a lot of problems with this tool and it wasn't behaving the way that I normally think. So I turn symmetry off and then now I can just drag along an edge and then go right here like that and hit enter. And that's given me the uh, behavior that I'm used to uh, for this tool. So I need to get another split on this guy right here. So we're going to go back to that multi-cut tool. And now I can just slide just a point on here and hit enter. And that's really nice because I can hit F9 and that's putting a vert right there like that for that. And now I can take this vert here. I'm going to take it and move it here. Hold down V and kind of snap right to there. And then this one I do wish I uh, would have maybe snap that a little better or split that a little better. So I can I can split it better than that. I'm going to go from here, this point, and then go right across right there. Like that. Hit enter. And then now we can go to F11, select this, get rid of it like that. And we've already got that point on here for this, so that matches up, that matches up. And now we can uh, combine these objects together. So I'm going to hit F8, delete history. Uh, that's something that you're going to want to do. I'll hide the modeling toolkit there. Um, if you got history on stuff, uh, Control Alt D, uh, D, Control Alt, or sorry, Alt Shift D will delete um, history. Alt Shift D. So you can find that up here under Edit, Delete by Type, History, and you can just find the hotkey for that stuff. So that's something that you're going to you're going to use quite a bit. So just kind of get used to that. Alt Shift D, and uh, so we got no history on these three things, and I can take these pieces, select them, holding down Shift, and then on modeling, we're going to go to Mesh Combine like this. And that'll combine it all into one object. I can hit Alt Shift D to delete history. You can see the history goes away on that, and um, now it's one object, but these are not joined together. So if I select one of these points and move it around, you can see it's still not joined together. Now if we snap points on top of each other, like when we move that, we held down V and we snapped, those points should sit directly on top of each other. So we can use a tool in here, we can drag a marquee along all the model uh, for our verts, shift right click and say merge vertices and say merge vertices option box. And I'm going to give it a really low value, so 0 .001, uh, somewhere like that. And that means that this threshold is so small that unless verts are sitting directly on top of each other, they won't merge. So I could just drag that whole marquee around the whole thing, hit apply, and if everything worked right, we should be able to select this vert. And you can see it's now it's welded. Uh, this one is welded. These should be welded as well. And that's not. Maybe because this was not uh, entirely snapped up perfectly. So you can see we've got this here. I'm going to hold down V and then snap. But we do have an opportunity here where, um, let me show you this tool. So that's welded together. Let's say we just got a merge two. This comes in handy as well. So shift, right click over that, merge vertices, and we've got target weld. And you can click that point and drag it up to another point and it should uh, weld it together. So um, that should give you quite a few tools to kind of get all this kind of started. 
like that and through here. Um, if I did another measurement on uh, the distance going across from here to here, let's take a look at this and I've got uh, something here where I'm taking a look. It's, it's a little less than four centimeters, right? So I'm not gonna be super crazy accurate with this. So let's just go ahead and say create polygon primitives and do a cube, do the option box width of four, four and four, hit apply, and now we got this cube here. And what we can do with this is we're going to extrude this shape out that we've got now. So we got object mode, I can shift, right click and say extrude, and we can extrude this thing out. Now it's gonna give you all these controls, you can do thickness, you can do offset, um, divisions, like that. So those come in pretty handy, and like I said, it wasn't quite uh, four centimeters is just a little bit less and so I'll do something like this right here and get rid of that cube don't need it anymore and um, this is only half the thickness right so Maya does have a nice mirroring uh, tool that we can use so let's select this here and go to mesh and then go to mirror and do uh, the option box for this because you can tell it which direction you want to mirror it I've got this side which is positive X this is positive Y positive Z and I need to mirror it from positive to negative. So mirror axis position, it's in right here in the world. You can have it and you can use object space if you wanted and that would be, here's the pivot uh, point for this thing here. And let's say it wasn't on the world, you could use object and you could use the object space uh, pivot point to, to mirror across. But we're just gonna do world. We'll set this back to zero. And then we're gonna mirror the direction uh, negative X like that. You can also tell it to combine with the original. You can merge border vertices. I put a custom threshold and I use a really low value again, um, 0 0.001. So everything has to be snapped perfectly to the, um, the grid right here in order for this to combine the objects together correctly. And it sometimes it's a pain because it doesn't quite get it all, but that just means you're not snapping everything together all the way, right? So if I hit F10 for verts or edges, sorry, and selected all this like this. Let's just say we had some of the model and it wasn't quite on there. Um, it's not going to snap up, but I can convert that over to verts, control F9, and then I could put on the move tool. And this is what I was telling you about moving and snapping. If you want to snap to the grid, make sure this uh, tool setting is set to world. We're going to hold down X. I could snap right there like that and we're all good for that right there and then now I'm gonna mirror this across and you can see it's gonna give me uh, this shape that we've got going on here so I can delete the history for it and if I did everything right I could select these faces delete them and there shouldn't be anything in the center of this we can also go to our shading and do um, actually lighting and do two-sided lighting and then that way you can get lighting inside the object like that uh, that might come in a little bit handy whenever you're uh, doing some of the modeling stuff. So I'm going to hit undo to get that shape back. And this will give us um, the basis for this starting shape that we have here.